scripture comes from the book of Matthew, and it's very appropriate to what we are doing today. Matthew chapter 25, beginning with verse 31. When the Son of Man comes in his glory and all the angels with him, he will sit on his glorious throne. All the nations will be gathered before him, and he will separate the people one from another, as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. He will put the sheep on his right and the goats on his left. Then the king will say to those on his right, Come, you who are blessed by my Father, take your inheritance, the kingdom prepared for you since the creation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me something to eat. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you invited me in. I needed clothes, and you clothed me. I was sick, and you looked after me. I was in prison, and you came to visit me. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you, or thirsty and give you something to drink? When did we see you a stranger and invite you in, or needing clothes and clothe you? When did we see you sick or in prison and go to visit you? The king will reply, Truly I tell you, whatever you did for one of the least of these brothers and sisters of mine, you did for me. Then he will say to those on his left, Depart from me, you who are cursed into the eternal fire prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry, and you gave me nothing to eat. I was thirsty, and you gave me nothing to drink. I was a stranger, and you did not invite me in. I needed clothes, and you did not clothe me. I was sick and in prison, and you did not look after me. They also will answer, Lord, when did we see you hungry or thirsty or a stranger or needing clothes or sick or in prison and did not help you? He will reply, Truly I tell you, whatever you did not do for one of the least of these, you did not do for me. Then they will go away to eternal punishment, but the righteous to eternal life. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. You, you may be seated. <clears throat> All right, so we might go a little bit over 30 minutes this morning, okay? That's okay. That's okay. Let's bow our heads real quick. Gracious Lord, thank you for today, and thank you for the opportunities you have given us in this day. I pray we would take full advantage of them to make a difference in the world in which we live, using the gifts and graces and abilities and resources that you have given us to make a difference in this world for the sake of Jesus' name and to touch hearts and lives in Jesus' name as well. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. came across uh, an article uh, a few years back, and I've shared it before. You probably, some of you will probably remember it. Some of you won't, uh, and some of you probably never heard of it because uh, you're new with us. But I wanted to share it with you again. It's, it's an article that's titled, How to Be Miserable. How to Be Miserable. It says, if you want to be miserable, number one, think only of yourself. Talk only of yourself. Use the word I as often as you can. Mirror yourself continually in the opinions of others. Listen greedily to what people say about you. Expect to be appreciated. Expect to be appreciated. Be suspicious of everyone. Be jealous and envious of others. Be sensitive to slights. Never forgive a criticism. Trust nobody but yourself. Insist on consideration and respect from everyone. Demand agreement with your own views on every single thing. Sulk if people are not grateful to you for favors you have shown them. Never forget a service that you have rendered. Shirk your duties if you can. And then this final piece of advice for those who want to be miserable do as little as possible for others if you want to be miserable in life this is how you do it say it with me do as little as possible for others you know i don't know about you but i don't want to be miserable in this life i don't want to go through life where everything is about me and i'm always getting my feelings hurt i don't want to go through life where, where it, it, it's just my little kingdom or my little world. I want to know joy. 
I have found that you can discover joy in Jesus and in doing the sorts of things that Jesus calls us to do. I have discovered that you can find joy in following after the example of Jesus Christ when he kneels down and washes the disciples' feet. I have found you can, do, you can discover joy when you are doing things like Jesus did in, in touching people's lives, in feeding people who are hungry or, or, or trying to heal or bring healing to people that are, that are wounded or sick. Jesus makes this a part of his ministry. He makes it a central focus of his ministry because he too wants us to discover the joy that lies therein when we make a difference in other people's lives we discover a joy that comes from our service, from our giving, from our helping, from our moving beyond ourselves. So if you want to be miserable, do as little as possible for others. But if you want to know joy, discover it by doing as much as you can for the sake of others. Pardon me, allergies, dry the mouth, and all that kind of good stuff. So, uh, today's mission opportunity is a Be the Church Sunday. We've been talking about this for a while now. We are going to be the church today. It's an opportunity to be joyful because we are going to be making a difference in people's lives. 815 million people in the world don't get the food they need for a healthy life. Folks, we go home every day and we get a, a, a meal, you know. We, we, we go out to eat whenever we want to go out to eat, you know. We, we, uh, we are well fed. Uh, but there are children and adults around the world who, who go to bed hungry. And that's, that's a shame. That's a shame. You know, uh, uh, there are 66 million primary school age children who attend classes hungry across the developing world. I mean, think about that for a minute. 66 million primary age school children. That's not talking about intermediate age. It's not talking about junior high age or high school age, but primary age, first, second, early years. 66 million primary school age children who are hungry. Who, who, who go to school, they may sit in these classes that are, you know, nothing more than huts and, and, and cinder block buildings, and, and they're having a hard time focusing on learning because their stomach is growling, because their mind is worried, when will I be fed next? There are people, 66 million people, kids, school-age children, that are hungry across the developing world. Rise Against Hunger, the organization we're partnering with today, provides nutritious meals. Uh, that's a combination of rice and the dried vegetables and, and, and vitamin, nutritional things, supplements that go into these meals so that children can focus on their education. So they don't have to worry about, are they going to get a hot meal or not that day? And then they can begin to focus on things beyond, where am I going to eat next? They're going to focus on things like their education, and by being able to focus on their education, they're going to be able to learn and grow. And this betters their odds to break out of the cycle of poverty in their part of the world. Today, we are going to make a difference in another part of the world uh, without ever leaving Bullard. We're going to make a difference beyond ourselves. We're going to make a difference. And in doing so, experience the joy of using very simple talents and gifts and abilities to bless someone beyond ourselves. In the parable of the sheep and the goats, Jesus talks to us about how ultimately we're going to be evaluated. It says that God does, does not evaluate us based upon some knowledge we've learned. It doesn't, God doesn't evaluate us based upon the fame we acquired. God does not evaluate us based upon the fortune that we've gained. What it says is, in this parable, the lesson Jesus is teaching is that God will evaluate us according to our response to human need. God will evaluate us based upon our response to human need. When you do it unto the least of these, he says. The parable of the sheep and the goats teaches us three things about serving others in Jesus' name. First, serving others is about meeting basic needs. 
sometimes we, we make things so complicated, you know? We, oh, if, if I'm going to fulfill this parable, I'm going to fulfill Jesus' command to serve, then it's got to be something grandiose, it's got to be something big. Nuh uh. Jesus is basically saying, keep it simple, stupid. K I S S, that old saying, keep it simple, stupid. Jesus is saying, keep it simple. Water to those that are thirsty, food to those that are hungry welcoming the stranger visiting the person in prison those are simple things it doesn't take great knowledge to do these sorts of things it doesn't take great talent to do these things or either keep it simple meet basic needs second lesson we learn from this passage is that serving others must be done selflessly serving others must be done selflessly the people jesus talked about helping Helped not because they thought they were getting anything out of it. They simply did it because it was the right thing to do. They weren't even aware uh, that that uh, what they were doing. They remember they, they said to him, Jesus, when did we do these things? You know, I, I remember going and helping out there. I remember going out serving there. I remember doing this. I remember doing this. But when did we do this for you? And Jesus said, When you did it to the least of these, that's when you did it to me. And that takes us to our third point, which is when we are serving others, we are in reality serving Jesus Christ himself. Whenever you serve others by feeding them or by giving water or by helping somebody change a tire or by, by serving in the nursery or by welcoming a guest to church or by helping your neighbor mow their yard or, or bagging up meals so that they can go to the other side of the world, you are doing these things for Jesus you you are serving Jesus Christ himself listen again Matthew 25 40 truly I tell you these are Jesus words truly I tell you whatever you did for one of the least of these brothers and sisters of mine read those last words with me you did for me St. Francis of Assisi was a monk back in the 1100s and 1200s he experienced this reality in a very supernatural way he was traveling on horseback uh, and before he became a monk and before he was this, this spiritual giant that we read about in our history he was a spoiled wealthy high-born high-spirited young man who was going through life with a silver spoon in his mouth but he was not happy at all his life he felt was incomplete one day he was out riding and he met a leper alongside the road, someone who was otherwise repulsive to him, someone who was loathsome to him, someone who was ugly to him. And yet something inside of him in that moment compelled him to get off of his horse and to throw his arms around that marginalized person. And as he put his arms around that leper, and he pulled back, he looked into the face of that man, and supernaturally it changed into Jesus' face. There's another story that's told of, of, uh, of a man named Martin of Tours. Martin was a Roman soldier, and he was also a Christian. One winter day as he was entering a city, a beggar had stopped him and asked him for money, but he did not have any coin on him to give. And so it's, what he did instead was he pulled out his sword and he took off his own cloak, which has been, you know, worn weather and fed threadbare, but it was all he had to give. So he took his sword, he, he split the coat in half as this beggar stood in front of him, shivering from the cold of the winter, and he took that half of the cloak and he wrapped it around the, the gentleman's uh, shoulders and, so that he have a little more warmth and maybe make it through the night. Later that night, Martin went to his own home and he went to sleep and as he was sleeping he had a dream and in his dreams he was in the in the heavenlies and he saw in the heavenly places all the angels speaking to Jesus and one of the angels said to Jesus said master why are you wearing that battered old torn up cloak who gave it to you and Jesus answered softly my servant Martin gave it to me 1 John chapter 4, verse 19 is a short, simple, but very powerful version. It says this, We love because God loved us first. Why are we doing what we're going to do today? Why? 
We're going to serve today because Christ first served us. We're going to love others in a practical way by taking a little bit of our time. Our feet might get a little tired, folks, standing up. We can sit, that's okay. We, we might have to put off lunch just for a little while so that we can make, some, make sure someone else has lunch when they may not have had it any other way. And that's okay. We could do these things. We can love others this way because Christ first loved us. And when we do this, we do it not for any other reason than for the glory of God and so that we too might serve Christ in the world by serving others. Amen? Amen. Amen.